Hello and welcome back to the channel, I'm EVM and this is a sort of follow-on video from one that I did a month or two back about the heat loss calculations that we got done for this house in preparation for the uh, electrification, if you will, of our heating and hot water. We are definitely doing that, we just haven't quite settled on how we're going to do that. I'll be honest, the front runner at the moment is probably a heat pump, but we haven't pressed the button, as it were, and gone down the path. Now in that video, we had a lot of comments um, and Twitter DMs as well and various other messages about infrared panels. And well, have you thought about that? Are you going to do that? Uh, well, we have looked into it. It is something that we did consider, but we've ultimately discounted. So I thought in this video, I'll tell you why we're not going for the infrared panels. Now, before I go any further, I should point out that I've done all the usual research I do uh, using Google and various other means that most people can. Uh, but one other source which has been invaluable is using the Heat Geek channel. And for me anyway, speaking to them direct. They've been a big help and please do go and subscribe to those because they're essentially the experts who teach the experts how to do heat loss calculations and various things like that. So. They're people I definitely listen to and uh, I would definitely encourage you, if you're on this sort of journey, to go and subscribe, watch their videos and uh, keep an eye on it because they are doing a lot more now. Uh, so thank you to them for helping me out with this video. Uh, now, infrared panels. I think the first place to start is how they work. Essentially, it works very much like the sun. It heats an object up rather than the air. So if I had a fan heater, I could do with some props really hit now, couldn't I? Ha ha, like magic, here we are. So this is a fan eater. That essentially pulls air in from here, from the back, and with a very hot e heating element, with electricity of course, heats the air up and spews it out of the front. So the air gets heated up, and then if I were to sit in this room, the air would be warm, I would absorb heat, I would be comfortable that way, you know, the, the settee, the table, everything would absorb heat, heat from the air. With an infrared panel, of which this iPad is going to um, <coughs> pretend to be one, this essentially, like the sun, uh, beams out infrared rays and heats things up. You can tell I'm being very technical on this one, can't you? So if I was stood here, I wouldn't get any heat directly from the panel. If I was stood here, very much as if you were stood in the winter sunshine, then I would be heated up. The air in between would not be, it's the object or the person would be heated up instead. So the settee, the table, uh, people, the floor, the, the house in general, any surface, I guess, would absorb heat and that would in turn heat the air up and we're, well, we've both got heating solutions. One works from this side, one works from this side and they eventually end up doing the same thing, making the house warm. So why have we chosen to discount the heating panels in favour of, let's say, a heat pump, because uh, as I said, that's probably the front runner for us at the moment. Uh, well, it's down to a few different factors, and I should point out at this stage, everybody is different. Our house, our usage of that house and the amount of people in it will be different to probably everyone watching this video. So what's good for us doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. So kind of like the other video, I'm not trying to give you advice on what to do with your house. I'm basically saying this is what we've chosen and why. It's uh, following the journey, if you will, of what we're doing to this house. Right, so the first thing, it's all essentially about efficiency for us, isn't it? You know, that, that's what I like. I love efficient things. And even if the initial outlay might be more, I, I, I like the idea of I'm being efficient, I'm using less. A heat pump is... Well, for us, we're predicted to get over, but let's say 400%. We should get more than that. I'm, you know, it's a relatively modern house. It's insulated. Uh, we're lucky in that respect. So it, it will suit a heat pump. And even if we only got 350% efficiency, that is more, substantially more, than an infrared panel would ever give us. Bear in mind that we're talking about the whole house here. 
So for us, we are usually almost always occupying this house. My wife works evenings and nights, I work during the day. If we go away for a week or two, then obviously we just shut the house down. But essentially, day to day, there is somebody in the house. So I want the house to be warm all the time. Let's imagine you got 20 degrees during the day and you're nice and comfortable. If we go out for several hours, it'll probably only drop back to about 17 or 18 because we'll be back in an hour or two or three or four. So therefore, there's no point in dropping the temperature all the way down. I want to just trickle the heat into the house, hence the heat pump, hence uh, doing all the heat loss calculations. And that's how we use it. We want it to be always at a nice temperature. It will always be nice and efficient and never cooling down beyond holidays. If I want heat quickly, I would go for the panels. If the house was cold, the panels would heat me up far sooner than the heat pump would via the radiators. But as we're never really cooling the house down, I don't see that as a benefit. So the quick heating that a panel will give me over the radiators via the heat pump, I won't really see that. The second thing is that I want something to do everything. I want it to do my heating of the house and my hot water. The infrared panels will not do that, which would mean I would have to have something else to take care of my hot water, which means I would be paying a lot more for my hot water, a hell of a lot more for my hot water than I would be with a heat pump. Even a not very efficient heat pump day would use far less than just a heating element, heating up a tank of water. So that has to be factored in as well. So as I said before, the heating of the house would be less efficient in terms of I would use more electricity, it would cost me more to run, and the hot water as well would use more electricity it would cost me more to run. Uh, we could uh, get a, a mixage type tank, we could get uh, heat storage batteries. There's all sorts of things that could take care of that, but essentially I, I want my heat pump to do it all. We will be using a lot of energy because it's always occupied, therefore I want that energy, that heating, that hot water to be as efficient as possible. The third thing is the installation costs. This is something I think people severely underestimate when, well, for a few that I've been talking to anyway, in terms of how much it would cost to get heat panels throughout this house. But once you've bought the panels, which for a house of this size would be well into four figures, you've then got the installation of them. And that's what I think a lot of people underestimate. I don't want cables dangling down the wall, going to a plug socket or wherever they may go to. And it wouldn't make sense for the placement of it as well. This is one thing which infrared has a little bit, I'll say it's a slight con. The placement of the panels a key. For us, I think ceiling mounted would make the most sense. I can't put it on that wall, that's where the window is. I don't want to put it on that wall, even above there, because it looks stupid, and that's where the TV is, and half of the infrared would probably shoot out of the window. It would go on this wall, I guess. It would kind of heat the room up, but we don't want a massive big picture frame or mirror here. Otherwise we'd already have one here. And aesthetics matter, they do. Um, so the thing that would, uh, the placement should I say, that would make the most sense is it is on the ceiling. Now, mounting something on the ceiling isn't particularly expensive, but we'd have to get it wired into the electricity, which means we're gonna to have to get an electrician to put things on the ceiling in most or possibly all rooms, and electricians aren't cheap. And then we'd have to presumably, again, get a plasterer in, because all the cables will be chased in, they'll be damaged to all the ceilings, and that's not gonna be cheap either. Every ceiling, possibly some walls, would need plaster work, they would need redecorating, they would need the electrician, and then there's the panels themselves. So we're talking thousands of pounds to get an infrared heating system throughout this house. And of course, we're forgetting one big thing, for us anyway, decommissioning the existing heating system, taking out all the radiators, now that's not massively difficult, but you've got to take them off, you've got to make the wall good. That might be a bit of polyfiller, it might be replastering. Re it will need redecorating. This is a hard floor, which means that where the radiators disappear into the floor, we're gonna end up with holes near the skirting board. I don't want holes in my floor with nothing going down there. So that would have to be sorted out in every room. So decommissioning that, buying the panels, electrician, plaster work, redecorating, that's going to be very expensive. Possibly not as expensive as a heat pump, but still lots and lots of money. And when it comes to the heat pump would trump it in running costs, in efficiency, 
then I'm not so sure that the financials make sense. There's also no grant for infrared panels, there is at the moment anyway, for heat pumps. But essentially we would need a 5 kilowatt heat pump and 5 radiators of, I think it was 11 or 12, would need radi uh, <laughs> replacing, not radiating. Um, so it depends on your house. We would only have to replace some radiators and a bit of piping upstairs, that's it. So we don't have to rip everything out, we don't have to repipe the entire house, we'd have to change all the radiators. You might have to replace everything, you might have to replace nothing. So this is why there's no one size fits all solution. It's like an electric car versus a petrol car. Yes, the EV is more expensive, but eventually it does that. And we're talking something that's gonna be installed for many, many years. Now, I know some people don't put much faith in this, but a good part of my planning ahead is a time of day tariff, i.e. it's cheaper at night than it is during the day. So for example, at the moment I'm on Octopus Go, it's 34 pence for electricity during the day and seven and a half at night for just four hours. And I know a lot of people say, well, they're not gonna be around for long because if everyone gets an electric vehicle or this and that, then there won't be an off peak. There will always be an off peak because you've got industry running through the day. You've got people using things during the day that they don't at night. So there will always be that change. I mean, Economy 7 has been around since 1976. There's always gonna be a difference. And let's face it, if there isn't, then we've got a balanced grid and everything's much better than it is now. However, even if we end up with that balanced grid or no more off-peak, we're decades from that happening, decades away. With a heat pump and other options, I can heat my hot water up during that four hour period. So I'm paying seven and a half P it's running, let's say, two to three hundred percent efficient on the hot water. So in reality, I'm paying, I don't know, two, three, four pence per kilowatt hour for my hot water because it's heating it up, not always, but predominantly, when that nighttime rate is in play, when it's cheap. Because of that efficiency as well, i.e., I will use less electricity with the heat pump during the day, I can use my home battery system to power that for longer. So at the moment, I have a, a roughly eight kilowatt hour storage capacity in my battery system, and that would give me essentially eight kilowatt hours worth of heating via the 100%-ish efficient infrared panels. That eight kilowatt hour battery, if I use that purely to drive the heat pump, I would get probably 20 odd kilowatt hours worth of energy back from it. So that could see me through the day, charge my battery at night in winter, that gives me a lot of energy, a lot of heat during the day before I have to dip in to the expensive peak time electricity. Now, there is one situation where an infrared panel would make sense for us. There is a specific place where I might actually get one. I want to heat the whole house up. So imagine taking all your internal walls out of your house. That's what I'm heating up. Heating a whole car up on the inside you might have dual zone climate control, but at the end of the day, the temperature at the back and the front are gonna be the same very quickly, aren't they? Certainly if you turn the heating off. You're not gonna have 18 degrees for the people in the back and 21 in the front. It just doesn't work like that because heat will even itself out. It will move around inside the insulated walls. And as these aren't really particularly insulated, the heat will just go everywhere. I want it all to be warm because if I have a radiator off in one room, all that's gonna happen is the radiators in the surrounding rooms are gonna heat that up indirectly because the heat will transfer through these walls, through the open doors that we always have, and at the end of the day, it's gonna be less efficient. And the microzoning element of an infrared panel system, we wouldn't see that benefit, apart from in one room, which is directly underneath me at the moment. Right, so this is the room. You have to come through the garage and it's essentially what we call a cinema room. It sounds posh, but believe me, it's not. It's essentially a lot of uh, secondhand stuff online with uh, a painted wall and uh, a projector. Now, this is something that we don't use very often. It's probably looking at, I don't know, once every one to two weeks. So this is perfect for an infrared panel situation because there is no heating in this room. There's no heating on this entire floor. We've effectively got the garages, um, and this room, it's, there's no windows, it's semi-basement, it's probably about two thirds of the way up is the, uh, uh, the ground outside. It's just a room that we thought, well, what can we do with it other than stick junk in? And of course, 
me being me, I wanted a cinema room. At the moment, we use the uh, fan here that I showed you earlier to heat it up. So let's say we want to watch film. I'll turn that on and if it's winter and it's, it's, it's cold, it will heat the, uh, the space up. It'll heat the uh, room up in about 10, 15 minutes, 20 if it's really, really cold because as, as I said, the garage is right there. And then for a panel, however, we could mount it on the ceiling uh, and when we're sat down watching whatever it is we're watching, that would heat us up instantly, pretty much. It would eventually heat up the settee and the, the everything around it to heat up the whole room. But in terms of just watching what would be, what, two or three hours, uh, however long a film is, it would probably suit. Uh, another example would be uh, if you've got a shed or a, a hobby room, whatever you want to call it, outside, especially in winter. If you're working in a shed for, let's say, an hour, a uh, fan heater would work, but most of that heat would just instantly disappear out of the thin wooden panels, out of the door. Whereas an infrared panel, doesn't matter if there's a breeze, doesn't matter in terms of efficiency, the heat would get to you at least. So it would make you feel more comfortable and won't waste a ton of energy, which would just end up going out to the outside world. So in a situation like that, a room that's infrequently used and not part of the whole house's heat envelope, that's where, for me, a heat panel comes into its own. A massive benefit of a heat panel system is that you can microzone easily. In our situation, as I said, it doesn't make sense, but it does in that particular room. So let's go back upstairs. So the infrared panels do ultimately have a place. If you've got somewhere, as I said, that you're only gonna spend an hour or two in that isn't part of the heating envelope of your house, then maybe it would make sense for you to get one. I think when you look at what would be for us, a far more invasive installation, that, that, that sealed the deal, ultimately. It's not as efficient, it would cost possibly just as much, but it wouldn't be cheap to install, it would be, still be very expensive, it would look potentially strange. I know radiators aren't exactly pretty, but we've had them since we've moved into this house and they're just normal. I, I just see it as a lot more faffy, a lot more invasive than just using the existing heating system we've got. It's a long-term thing. Bigger installation costs, cheaper running costs. So then, to recap, we are not choosing panels because the installation will be probably as expensive or not that far off in terms of costs to install as a heat pump would. The panels would look slightly odd and be very invasive to install. They wouldn't run as efficiently or anywhere near as efficiently as said heat pump. It wouldn't do the hot water, so I would need to think of what to do with that because I'm taking out a gas central heating boiler that does both and need to replace both. But as a whole house heating system, for me, it doesn't make any sense at all for us in this house. When it comes to home energy, I see this channel as more of a, let's open a discussion up in the comments section because you might tell me something and it has happened in the past and will happen in the future that I thought was true, but ultimately isn't. I'm not trying to say, I'm an expert, do what I tell you to do, which a lot of channels do. I'm trying to say, this is what we are doing. This is why we're doing it. And if we're wrong, let me know, because then I can change my mind before it's too late. <laughs> uh, but I think, I'm, I think I'm okay on this one. I'm pretty sure we're going down the right route, given the priorities that I've put forward. I want it to be as efficient as possible, even if it costs us a little bit more in money because then ultimately we use less. We consume less and that's good all round. Okay, right, I think I'm done now. Um, thanks for watching. Please, as I said, litter the comments section with any ideas or thoughts that you've got and um, become a member if you can. You can't use iOS devices for whatever reason, but ultimately all you have to do is look for the join button next to the subscribe button. 99p a month gets you these videos a week earlier and unique videos as well that will never be seen on the normal channel members only. Okay, I'm done with the pitch now. Um, thanks for watching. See you soon.